Well, hello there. It's Thursday. And uh, thanks to all my viewers and uh, the contributions that they made. Uh, not only have I had food to eat, but I've also got some money saved up for my car to be repaired. Uh, my parents have generously donated some money towards it. So the last of my savings will go to getting my car fixed a second time. We'll see what they say. They haven't phoned me back yet, so... But they've only been in for about an hour. Anyway, someone was asking me uh, what my longest bike ride was. Well, my longest bike ride was when my, myself and a, and a friend, John Gladman, uh, who was, uh, we were still really uh, in our 16s and 17s, I think it was. We had saved up our pocket money and um, we rode to the Isle of Wight. Uh, and one, one day of our holiday, because we were out camping, we took everything with us on our bikes. Uh, and we rode around the Isle of Wight in one day. That was, that was my longest, that was about 70 miles that was, uh, that day. Um, and when we got back, it was in the pitch black. And of course, we hadn't planned on going out in the dark, so we didn't have lights. Uh, but going back then, you're talking 40 years ago, um, the car, there weren't so many cars on the road, and especially on the Isle of Wight. It's like going back in time 40 years. Uh, I do like the Isle of Wight and I should hopefully go back there again. Uh, but nowadays when I'm up here in Hull, I do about, uh, when I'm on the road bike, I, I can do about 40 miles before my arse starts to ache. <clears throat> um, the, the mountain bike, I don't know what it is about my mountain bike, but the saddle is so much more comfy. The road bike, I just can't get it right. I just can't get it right. I don't know what it is. I've got the same width saddle. Um, that's a slightly different saddle to this one. Uh, this road bike's got a cutaway in it to help ease the pressure on uh, certain parts of your body, which we don't need to go into. Uh, but yeah, I, I can do uh, um, where I normally go to. If I'm if I'm not wanting to go too far, I'll go. Uh, up to the church at uh, Longriston, which is about uh, eight miles away. So by the time I get back, I will have done 16 miles. If I want to do a little bit further, I'll go up to the canal bank at uh, the uh, the other side of Longriston, at a place called, um, well, the name escapes me for a minute. It's a, it's a funny, peculiar name. I'll, um, I'll put it in the title up there. Uh, yeah, so I'll go up to the canal, that's 12 miles, so that's 24 mile round trip. Or, if I want to go get a little bit adventurous, I'll go up to the, um, uh, the up to the church at uh, Sigglesthorne, uh, and then I'll go down to Mappleton, and I'll have a cup of tea or coffee there at the, there's a little, called the post office in Mappleton. Uh, you'll find that online. And uh, I'll, I'll have a cup of coffee there and a piece of cake, and then I'll cycle home. And that's a, that's about 40 mile round trip. That one. Uh, but yeah, if I want to be a little bit more adventurous, I'll go further further north than Sigglesthorne. I'll go around all the back roads back at Catwick and uh, places like that. Uh, and then I'll head back back home. But yeah, I like to, uh, when the weather's nice, I like to get out at least two or three times on the road bike. Uh, and the mountain bike, what I normally do there is a 12 mile trick, uh, trip along the, the uh, Hornsey Trail to the seafront at Hornsey. And I'll have some chips and a sausage. Now there were, it was three pounds, uh, last summer it was three pounds for a sausage and a portion of chips and a can of water a bottle of water or a can of coke something like that that was a three pound meal deal uh, 
Uh, I do believe it's gone up to £3.50 now. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, yeah, the prices are going up. And uh, my, my electricity company went bust last, uh, last year, late last year, it went bust. And uh, it was taken over by Shell Energy. Now we were paying £91 a month. We've managed to accrue a credit of £315. Uh, and they want to increase our payments from £91 a month up to £151 a month. That's a £60 increase. That's almost a 50% increase. It's, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's two thirds, 66% uh, increase on what we were paying. Uh, so I don't know whether they're, they're foretelling the future of energy prices going through the roof. Uh, I know petrol prices have gone up. They were £1.15 a litre before Christmas, when that, that was the last time I bought fuel. And uh, it's now up to one pound fifty a liter. Yeah, a liter. Um, yeah. I my first job I had uh, when leaving school was I worked in a petrol station, and the price there was seventy eight pence. It was, uh, I think, seventy five pence, and the day my first day on the job it the uh, we had to go and put the prices up to 78 pence a gallon yeah that's, it's four and a half liters was cost you 78 pence uh, but but now petrol the the tax that you pay on petrol is absolutely ridiculous it's uh the for diesel i know the diesel it's about 60p a liter is what we would pay on board ship for uh diesel and we would buy like several tons at a time, right, unless you're on a big container ships where you you would load uh, probably 2,000 tons of diesel and uh, 6,000 tons of heavy fuel. Uh, but that would all be about 60p a litre. Of course, we're we're paying one pound fifty a litre. Uh, that extra hike is tax, and that's set to rise. Yeah, no one, no one's talking about. No one wants to talk about energy prices being uh, hiked up. It just seems that this current time, this current climate, is a uh, is an excuse to put the prices up unreasonably. Uh, yeah, it's not good. But anyway, we were talking about bike rides, and of course, as you all know. Uh, <laughs> losing track of the conversation is what I do best yeah so yeah well I, the mountain bike I, I tend to go along the along the dirt track to Hornsey which is quite exciting there's a couple of, a couple of steep bits as it dips down into uh, one of the drains I was talking about earlier um, and uh, there's another little bit of a climb where it climbs up the embankment the uh, railway carries straight on but they haven't they haven't um, dug that out because it's all a bit boggy there. So what they've done is, they, instead of uh, having the cycle track continue along the train tracks, they've actually taken it up, up along the embankment uh, and back down again to where it becomes slightly drier. Uh, obviously the train track would have been uh, uh, well uh, supported in that boggy section of uh, road, railway track, whatever you call it. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, to, um, I've, I've, the last time I came out on the bike was a little bit cooler. It's um, it's eight degrees now, um, and uh, I had too much on. I wore I had three layers on, um, four layers if you include the coat, and uh, that was a bit warm. I got too hot. By the time I got home, I was sweating in buckets. But uh, now that I'm here. Uh, I feel a bit cold because I've only got three layers on now, including the jacket. So I've got my uh, my thermal undergarment, whatever you want to call it, base layer, they say now. I've got my, a thick fleece 
uh, kind of top and uh, this jacket and I've got my little snood thing whatever you call it just to keep the, the neck warm and of course I've got my hat on my little beanie hat which goes under my crush helmet nicely yep that um, that certainly plays it makes a big difference having a you've got a ventilated crush helmet and uh, you're out in the cold it uh, certainly makes a difference having this on to keep some of the wind out to, um, so that makes a difference yeah it's nice getting out uh, yeah I know it's a bit of a round trip after dropping the car off it's a bit of a round trip to come up here but it's not an hour mount I feel better I didn't it's, it's it's that first step that first step of getting out of the house with the bike is the most difficult I find because it's cold the sun's gone in it's cloudy so it's a little bit miserable but now I'm out here I'm, I'm I'm happy. I'm warm enough. I, obviously, I sweated too much, so I'm, it's got a little bit chill. So, um, yeah. But well, when I get going again, I'll, I'll soon warm up. I'll get home and I'll have some have some lunch and wait for the phone call. Tell me how much damage it's going to cost to fix my car. Real, real bummer that we come at the wrong, completely at the wrong time. You know, I thought, to be honest, I thought my car was a petrol because I've done. Uh, 700 miles I've done and it slowly got worse as I started to fill up the, the car with this new E10 uh, I filled up just before Christmas and I went down to see my parents and uh, I filled up uh, or refreshed the tank then and did another 250 miles back home so that will be 500 miles and it was when I put the third tank of fuel in um, that it started to judder. Uh, it started off real mild and it would clear itself. After, after the engine had warmed up and I'd stopped and I'd restarted, the, the, the juddering had gone away. Uh, and then it was, um, well, when I came home again, I tried it again and it was just really was juddering. The, the whole car was shaking and uh, of course. Um, I couldn't fix it because I was going to see. I came back uh, and uh, I suddenly remembered I had RAC membership so I called the RAC out and they came and had a look at it. They put their diagnostics machine on and said that one of the units wasn't firing. Unit, unit 5 wasn't firing. So I got, got the, the garage to, uh, a week ago, week, two weeks ago almost. I got that garage to uh, swap out the spark plugs and the ignition coil for that unit well anyway that hasn't fixed the problem uh, it was still misfiring so whether it's something more complicated than just ignition coil I don't know I say I'm no car mechanic I mean if, if it was a ship's engine I would know more because uh, yeah normally this you get the same faults on a diesel engine, whichever make it is. So, but anyway, digress. So yeah, that's it. That's today's story. My longest bike ride was 70 miles around the Isle of Wight. And what I do up here in Hull is I do about 40 miles, maybe three or four times a week in the nice weather. And uh, I suppose I could really. Um, Sarah's working at the weekend, so I could technically go down to the seafront and buy myself some chips while she's at work uh, I think I've got some coins somewhere we are, um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll nip out and uh, I'll get some chips and have a bit of a ride out if it's nice I mean there's supposed to be high speed winds coming uh, we had some at the weekend I believe which blew our bay tree over should really put it in a bigger pot can't put uh, can't put anything in the soil here because the uh, we've got eight inches of soil and the rest of it's clay. So one minute we've got bone dry soil and it's cracked, and the next minute it's a bog because the water won't run away. But when it does dry out, the water runs away really quickly, which is crazy. But anyway, um, so we've got most of our plants are in pots at home, just to uh, just to aid with the. Uh, 
water retention or draining rather than being over boggy or dry but anyway like I said I've digressed again so well, anyway that's it I'm gonna um, have a little drink I think I've got a, a snack bar in my bag and uh, so I'm gonna scoff that and uh, cycle back I think I've got about four and a half miles to go back home now it's about three miles from the three miles from the garage straight here and uh, I've got to go wiggly woggly down the down the main road well down the country lane to the main road I've got a quarter of a mile to do on the main road and then I'm back into the uh, residential streets and of course I take the back road so that I avoid the cars uh, yeah so that's it then um, I shall upload both this blog and the uh, video journey here and back home again uh, nothing exciting has happened so far but a bit of scenery me chatting away to myself like I normally do it uh, yeah it's, uh, having a little bit of solitude and exercise at the same time gives you uh, helps to clear the mind I don't know I don't know what the science is behind it um, you know I'm, I'm no doctor although I have seen a few <laughs> yeah anyway right I keep saying I'm gonna go so I'm gonna go now right see you later goodbye